So the plan is basically we're going to head to an anchorage for two nights. It's going to be very, very windy. And then we are going to hopefully, if the wind stays as it is, going to cross over to Spain in two nights. So this will be a nice little shakedown, especially after doing the engine. Little bits and bobs, see how that runs now. No mainsail, as you know, obviously I'm not going to use the mainsail. Just a jib and a mizzen. We're only going 10 miles. Yeah, it should be a drama free sail quite windy now so i think the most drama will be getting off this dock because we have a big catamaran right in front of us tightly parked so and behind us so the plan is basically reverse out and dad's gonna go on the back ned owner's gonna gonna go on the front and mum's gonna do some filming to nice. try and capture it a different perspective. A different perspective. Yoshi's having a pre-departure massage. <laughs> Relaxing massage. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just wait till there's like less gusts. Like, for example, like now. I think it's gusting like 22, something like that. But it's a steady 15. Now for some more slow starting engine. Turn it over a while first, see if that helps. Turn it over with the little thing up. Glow for 10, 15 seconds. Yeah, just hold it on, hold the starter on when it's like that. Yeah, I would do, yeah. We're getting assistance from the uh, yeah. starting to fight. experimenting with how to get out because uh, it's not easy. <laughs> Just gonna go for a push and then pick them up down the dock and yeah, we'll see if it works. Uh, it's the wind is so strong isn't it? Yeah. So there's not much power coming from the boat, I think, because I twiddled the hydraulic uh, relief valve, so... Are you going to put it back where it was? Yeah. So they're going to take the catamaran in front of us and uh, move it forward. We're going to go off, pick them up, we're going to move the catamaran back to where it was. No one will know. <laughs> we almost stole a catamaran. What are we doing, Mark? Sailing. <laughs> what are we doing, Steve? Sailing. <laughs> what are we doing, Nana? Packing up the panders. <laughs> oh. So, all thanks to Stu, the autopilot is working. It's keeping us on course nicely. Uh, I know I get a lot of stick for just having the jib, 
I'm being lazy again. But I understand why it's not good. The wind is uh, it's pushing the front of the barn because we're going slightly towards the wind. It's uh, a bit more difficult. So they are the two masts featuring on this channel for th the third time. <laughs> it's the third time we've sailed out of this channel. And I'd, I'd say hopefully the last, but we have so many great memories here. I'd love to come back. So now we're turning down. Um, we're pretty much due to be on a broad reach, which is also part of my thinking of just having the jib up because if I'm on a broad reach, I like to take the main down. So it would just be a bit of a waste of time. That's my excuse anyway. But we're very comfortable doing five knots. This is the life. I've just gone down to get my jacket on and hat. Look at these hobbits from the north. <laughs> T-shirt and shorts. Even mum in her vest and shorts. Yoshi's not even wearing anything. <laughs> But I wonder if it is just me being a bit of soft. A, a bit soft. Like motor sailing into the wind. <laughs> yeah, he's getting a bit of power from that sail. These rocks actually look like Egypt. These rocks actually look like Egypt. See how the cones get swimming there. Yeah. And they are on the side, it's all sad. So, whereabouts are we now, Mark? We are in a place called Caro, and it's very well sheltered from the Mistral. Uh, and it's going to blow up to 40 knots tomorrow. So, it should be very interesting. Okay, drop. So what, what are you doing now, Mark? Just dragging the anchor oh, to drag, set it. Right. I'll go for a swim on the anchor now. Right. Yeah. Oh, same. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Father and son swim on the anchor. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> it's so cold. Yeah. Wow, well, now it's late October and uh, it's like 6, 7 in the p.m. <laughs> And these guys are going for a swim, and I'm wearing my jumper. <laughs> it's not a recreational swim, it's a... So check the anchor check swim. The anchor. <laughs> well, I want to film your face when you come up, <laughs> and film your goosebumps. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, it's really not too bad. Really? Yeah, it's really not bad. It's not bad? No, it's alright. Oh, nice. Well, enjoy your swim. Yeah. 
So the anchor, you can see it dragged along and it's not it's not dug in. Ah, uh, okay. So there's a chance that it would be fine, but I won't be able to sleep if, uh, if it's not dug in. Yeah, so yeah. So go back, do it again, put okay. like 40 metres of chain out and drag back. Okay. It's a bit overkill, but... I would just be anxious about it. Yeah, me, yeah, me let's do it. Do it. You, uh, no, 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 let's do it. So this advertisement's gonna be in some form. Do you have a problem with your blocked sinks? We do right now. As you can see, so we have got Undoes It Marine Growth Remover. Remo it works remo on everything. Yeah. Remove barnacles and other marine growth from seawater cooled equipment. And also tubes and pipes and pumps. Yeah, basically, we have a blocked sink. I'm going to try this to see if it works. So, I'm just going to pour it in. Well, that's perfect, isn't it, I think? Let yeah. that sink down. It is obviously true marine, biodegradable, phosphate-free, so it's good for the environment. This is one way of using it. It is very, very much multi-use. Also removes barnacles from boat bottoms, dinghies, bumpers, props, outdrives, and trim tabs. Safe for use on most metals, fiberglass, and gel coats. Nice. We've also put it in a little spray thing here, so We'll give it a little try on the dinghy as well. This is the amount of growth which we've accumulated from towing our dinghy all the time. But basically, you can just spray it on. Look at that, it comes off very, very easily. Whoa, nice. So make sure you check out Undoes It, link in the description. As you can see with our sink, it's done a really good job. It has unblocked it. Very nicely. So this uh, fisherman has dropped um, what looked like sinking nets in like a huge kind of S shape coming around and around the back of the boat and over to that little flag over there. But, so um, he was asking us when we're leaving, but what we'll do is me and dad were just saying we'll check out his nets and maybe poach a few of his fish. <laughs> Now, uh, it, it will be interesting to snorkel down and see actually what he's catching and I always find this stuff interesting. I always want to know what they're catching and how to catch them and if they taste good. Look at them, British couple, <laughs> baking under the mistral wind. <laughs> Are you guys enjoying yourselves? Yeah, we're all good, yeah. Nice. <laughs> we'll give you a good uh, review of trip advice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the Minky Hotel. Yeah. Minky B and B yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, bought themselves the their own radio too. BBC radio, <laughs> radio too. too. Steve right in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> well Mark is gonna be left alone in this house. <laughs> house of Minky. And he's editing today. And we're going on a walk to town, especially wash Yoshi. Uh, walk Yoshi. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you ready? So after some failed attempts with my little pole spear, I went and uh, bought this spear gun, which is surprisingly affordable actually. I thought they were much more expensive. I think it was about 50 euros. And we're gonna go out now. We're gonna check the anchor because we didn't check it after setting it again last night. And also we're gonna try and spear a fish and check this fisherman's fishing nets to see what type of nets he's got and what fish that he's trying to catch. Any comments? Don't hurt the fish. So now the season is definitely over because they're pulling up all the boys. Basically, they've reduced the swimming area and they're pulling up the little dinghy channel. So they've already pulled up the uh, left side of that. So, yeah. But uh, we're still out here. It's 
still out here anchor, anchoring. I think the meds, uh, as long as you pick your windows, like I've said before, like your windows get shorter, but there are still windows where you can enjoy it. Like I'm, I'm quite cold. Mum and dad are fine because they've come from Preston in in, in England, which is uh, not the warmest place on the earth. So these guys are out uh, shirtless, living life. I'm freezing. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there's still plenty more sailing to be had. Even in December, January, you get really nice days, but uh, more marina days, more uh, port days. I knew mum would see those windows and be like, they, they need to be cleaned. The intrepid explorers <laughs> are going off to catch our Catch a cold. Check your pockets. Woo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> All good. Now let's try and find a fish. <laughs> So, the anchor is dug in really, really well. Yeah. Good. We'll check the fisherman's nets, and there's no fish. Oh, <laughs> I'm actually borderline hypothermic at the moment. Oh dear. Get one. I think Dad's all right. He's still swimming. <laughs> He's still swimming. He's all right. He's washing his hair with some links. <laughs> <laughs> and uh... is it Africa? <laughs> Africa links. Uh, as usual, no fish. <laughs> Get in for some warm food. Yeah. Let's make you a nice brew. Nice uh, and I've knackered my finger as well. Oh dear. Let's have a look. Uh, don't worry, it's alright. So we're pretty much at the peak of the wind in this anchorage and I've been pretty anxious about this <laughs> anchorage because it says in the pilot book as well that uh, when there's a strong mistral, the swell comes in and it's not really been the case, it's been quite steady. But uh, of course, uh, I'm using uh, Windy with ECMWF. Is that the correct way of saying it? It's apparently the most accurate. We just need to get through tonight. As we saw before, the anchor's set really well, so it's not gonna be a problem. And then tomorrow we have quite a few things to do to get ready to basically, well, I don't know if you would call it offshore, but to basically go well, across to Spain. So um, I'll check the weather again one final time tomorrow night, but it looks like we'll be heading off very, very early in the morning after tomorrow. I think I might have really messed up my finger it's pretty bad. I won't show it on camera, uh, but should feel a bit better tomorrow. And obviously I didn't catch any fish. And I think I might have messed up the GoPro because I didn't get any footage and I think it might be broken. I don't know. Anyway, long day, uh, tiring day. <laughs> don't worry. I uh, know. It's going to be our first overnight, which is a big milestone for us well we might we're gonna leave early in the morning and we'll probably arrive at night so it's not gonna be overnight but uh it'll be in the night yeah mm, i'm pretty excited 24 hours and i'm really glad that we've got our parents with us <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's good it's a good rare shore I'm or not... maybe on the other hand it's quite responsible don't want my mum and dad going overboard <laughs> <laughs> we'll tie them down very securely <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we've got every eventuality. I was chatting to Dad today, you know, worst worst thing happens. In fact, the worst thing that's going to happen is that the wind will die down and we have to motor. And if the motor fails, then what we call a, a rescue. And then we would have to pay a big fat price, but at least we'd be safe. And uh, other than that, you know, we're going to be heading out early on in the sail into very heavy weather. Not very heavy, but like uh, up to 30 knots of wind. Uh, the forecast gusts, uh, but we'll reef down, try and make as much progress early on, and then the wind's set to die down. But we'll go through that a bit later. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried. It's going to be okay. I'm excited. I'm just tired. There's lots of stuff to do. Yeah. Uh, I want to 
Check well, so. now we got eight hands, so uh, I'm sure the things will be done faster. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yoshi, are you worried? <laughs> So as part of the pre-departure checklist is to check all the bilges uh, because we did have those pretty nasty leaks when we first splashed and they're all pretty much dry as a bone so here is where the leaks were and they have basically swelled up, the wood swollen up. This tabin is very dry now and um, obviously you can see it's delaminated there but from what I've been told by a couple of guys who've got experience boat building is that the tabbing is there just to waterproof them they're not um, <laughs> structural <laughs> um, but yeah they're they're all bone dry now uh, which is really cool it's always tense opening up the bilge boards and you just think oh gosh is there going to be water in there is there going to be another problem anyway I've checked this one also checked under the beds where the hydraulic motors are and um, check out my finger uh, it's broken <laughs> so I literally broke my finger uh, loading up the harpoon yesterday it's so silly so yeah the fish win again unfortunately there is a little bit of water here but I think that's from because we have a lot of holes under the engine that's just water that's splashing up and trickling down into there so that's okay and then on this side, hey. Nadiana's taking a poo poo. <laughs> we check no, here. Don't say that. And all clean and dry, which is nice to see. I'll just check this one. There's an old spillage in there, but it's not seawater. Okay, that's all good. A couple of things that we have to do as well. I'm gonna just retension the rigging, which I do quite regularly. It's never too loose, so it's not coming loose. I just wanna make sure everything's equally tight. Uh, because some of the lock nuts are not, uh, <laughs> some of them are non-existent, so. I think also, we're gonna pack up the dinghy. We're gonna roll that away. I've given that job to, uh, dad because <laughs> uh, you know out of action now with my little finger it's a great excuse basically we just need to kind of organize and go through some safety procedures get some easy to hand flares i installed the epurb here so i'll just show everyone how to use that you just push that tab down and pull it out and then click that little button so looking up the mast i can see it's bending a little bit to the left i don't know if you can see it on the camera so i'm just gonna tighten up the main shroud to see if that levels it out a bit Ooh, wobbly <laughs> Just on the lower shrouds as well, and it looks a lot straighter. Let me try and get a shot. So it's the night before the biggest sail of our lives. <laughs> I've done this little very accurate chart. <laughs> Basically, we're gonna leave at about two or three in the morning. So we're kind of here now. And it's gonna be gusting up to about 30 here, but we're gonna head along the coast. Uh, so there'll be less swell. Gonna head to there. And then as time goes on, we're gonna head across here. But at about two o'clock tomorrow, the wind dies down and gets very, very light. So, but it does start to come from the south. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. See if we get 
be calm. But basically we want to get under here and with that wind pushing us up basically right on the nose it might be a little bit difficult so we might need to run a little bit north. That's the Spanish border. But uh, loads of ports of refuge along this bit. No real anchorages along this long coast but uh, some marinas, expensive marinas that we can go to in a pinch. So Basically by 6am we want to be here, by 4pm here and then hopefully we can get down. Although I might be tempted to just go straight as the crow flies. That would be the shortest um, but the heaviest wind to start off with up until we get to about here. But we'll see, we'll play it by ear. Play it by ear, won't we, Yoshi? How are you guys feeling? Excited. We totally trust you, don't yeah. Steve. We've yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. We feel confident in your ability. <sighs> you're very you're a sensible lad, Mark, so oh. I trust you, love. We'll have an early night and everything will be good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'll sleep, but uh, if you guys can sleep, that's good. <laughs> We're going to be opening some Christmas presents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shortly, aren't we? So that might help you sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Tell us what's going on. <laughs> well, we're having some early Christmas presents. <laughs> because uh, it's difficult for us to bring back uh, stuff from the house so when our parents came they just brought us the big objects <laughs> so yeah. we get a preview before <laughs> our big trip yeah. it was so, so exciting oh, what is it Yoshi? what is it? Yoshi? so mum does painting Link in the description to Mum's painting. This is uh, what do you call it? That's an abstract wave. Abstract wave. It's really nice. Oh. And it'll look nice. Uh, uh, it will look nice. Yeah, right. yeah, that's a good spot. All right. All this right. is from our lovely granny. <laughs> I like it already. <laughs> it feels warm. Dear Mark and Adriana, I'm sending you a very special gift. I made this quilt many years ago and every hexagon is stitched by hand. I have enclosed two hexagons to show you how it was prepared. Uh, the hexagon pouch holds a silver thimble for Nadiana. It was on my finger for every stitch I made and was a and was given to, to me by Grandad's Auntie Maggie. It is over 150 years old. Oh my gosh. You may not have a use for the quilt on Minky, we will. <laughs> but I know yeah. you will treasure it and perhaps find a use for it in the future. Love to you both and looking forward to seeing you soon from Grand. Wow. Thank you, Granny. <laughs> Check out this 150 years old, what's it called? Thimble. Finger. Thimble. 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 150 years old. Uh. And the Granny spent so long making the quilt. Yeah. <laughs> we can watch them here. Oh, oh. oh this is perfect. Oh. Oh. It's actually so like, really well made. Yeah. And this is Granny who we're gonna hopefully make a sail pack with. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna learn from the master. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. No way. And it's all hand stitched. Hand, all handmade. Well, I'll find out next week how that very, very long sail goes and where we really test out this boat. Uh, thank you so much for watching and getting this far in the video. Thank you so much to Undoes It for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out the link in the description to try the Marine Growth Remover. It's done a really good job uh, for our sink and for our dinghy. And thank you so much to you guys who are showing up on the screen now for all your PayPals and coffees. Massively, massively appreciated. And yeah, we'll see you next week for a very fun sailing adventure.